For this, the Federal Ministry of Economic Cooperation and Development um, has launched a new form of cooperation, the so-called Reform and Investment Partnership. Reform partnerships are seen to be an incentive-based cooperation model for countries that are particularly committed to reforms. So Ghana was among one of the first countries in 2017 to conclude such a reform partnership with the German government. So it is crucial for us to see and to observe and to evaluate where the german ghanaian reform partnership will lead us concerning the topic of corruption. Corruption, unfortunately, is a serious threat to these endeavors. It undermines citizens' trust into the state, it hampers competition, and it makes a fair distribution of resources impossible. It poses a risk for companies that want to invest, but it also prevents the states from taking appropriate decisions on investments. According to Imani's latest survey, 50% of business executives indicate that corruption is a very severe obstacle to the business environment of Ghana. According to Transparency International, it is estimated that Ghana loses about 3 billion US dollars annually from corruption alone. Well, action is needed. A dialogue on that matter is more than necessary. Where does corruption start? Where does it end? How can we fight it? And where does one's individual responsibility while doing business start? Ladies and gentlemen, events like today's are important platforms of dialogue and among key figures from the public and the private sector. I see many interesting people here in the room who will sit here uh, in quite a, a few moments to discuss and to enlighten us on new approaches to fight corruption and also its role for Ghanaian business development. Distinguished panelists, ladies and gentlemen, let me wish you a very fruitful discussion. Thank you very much. Let's take a few studies that try to focus on private sector corruption. And our main focus, which is part of what we have been doing for the, for, for, for the one and a half years, is to look at various things that we can do to ensure that there are reforms that enhance the business climate in Ghana. So we look at various things on that. We look at COVID and business issues. We look at the African uh, free trade. We also look at taxation. We look at the issue of our business registration. We look at the issue of black power. And the sixth one that we are looking at is corruption. And we, we, we understand that from the literature, all these previous things that we have, we have looked at are connected one way or the other to corruption. And we wanted to end the year with corruption. But what we did was that we took the various top executives of organizations, so corporate institutions, captains of industry, and then we tried to look at what is the perception about these issues. And this study was the, the data collection was done in the fourth quarter of 2020. So the data was collected last year. And we looked at the top organizations. These are the top, the, the creme de la creme of the country, the top organizations, the top uh, experts from the, the, the corporate leaders from the public sector and the private sector. And then they fill the questionnaire for us and try to provide the perception. There are four key things that we look at. One is on the issue of corruption and the business environment. How is corruption affecting the business environment? If you go to an organization, they have the procurement unit, the taxation, the accounting, the accounting which is in charge of taxation issues, and the various units. What is, how is corruption affecting their performance? Then we also look at the issue about corruption and firm performance, which is less researched and less talked about. How is corruption affecting firms' performance? Then the third aspect is to look at the corruption management. In the literature, there are arguments about how corruption should be addressed. There are issues about corruption training, there are issues about corruption response, there are issues about corruption analysis. analysis. And in Ghana, we saw that part of corruption analysis when the special prosecutor was, was engaged to do a corruption analysis. Private sector institutions are supposed to do some of these things. So we ass ass assess the, the, the responses of these experts uh, and then, and then to, for them to give us the, the, the opinion on some of these issues. And then we also look at coping strategy. If corruption con continues to happen, how are you, as, an, as, as a, the head of an institution, how are you managing? How are you trying to manage the process? How are you moving on? That's where we found that 
ten percent of the of, of, of the of, of the executives were indicating that corruption benefits their performance. How about it's three percent of them are indicating that corruption is collapsing their businesses? So you see that the, the, the responses are dynamic, they are varied. But the aim of research is to look at all of these responses and try to see where can we have a balance in to ensure that we form responses that address the solutions. And the aim of this dialogue is to provide a, a number of responses, a number of recommendations for government to engage the various institutions, to engage parliament, to engage the executive, to engage the judiciary, and then to engage the press together and ensure that they are solutions to them. So that is the aim of this. Meaning now the leaves come at a value because of health things. The lady told me that if I'm buying watches less than five cities, he, she will put my watch in the rubber. Can you imagine how deep some of these things are gone? So for me, it's not about procurement being corrupt. It's not about accountant being corrupt. It's not about journalists being corrupt. It's the entire country, and therefore we need to reorient. We should just we should take away from focusing on a particular area. Look, when it comes to procurement, it comes with a lot of stakeholders. The engineers are there, they support us with our BOQ, deal of quantities. The IT guys are there with specification of ITs. Engineers, everybody support. So when you talk of procurement corruption, and you place it at the doorstep of a procurement practitioner, you are wrong. People don't even understand the entire procurement center. Again, my advice to the business, to the business sector, when they are going to an organization, especially with the public sector, they should go with a clean mind. Do you know that people come to procurement officer's office with the thinking that if they don't have anybody in the organization, they will not win a contract. So they come in there trying to corrupt the system so that they can get what? Contracts. But it is in the law. Tendering, being transparent, go.